Names are Accord. Borchardt. Hugo Borchardt. Where are you going? Next town. Yeah, Marysville. So you have uh, family? Friends? No. You are on vacation, perhaps. No. No, I'm not on vacation. Hell of a place to break down. Mine. Abandoned. Many people leave their junkers along here. Well, this is as far as I go. Once again, you are stranded in the wilderness. Story of my life. Uh -huh. yeah. oh, thanks again. Wait a moment. Perhaps we could help each other. What do you know about hunting? I've been a hunter all my life. I've been in this country 20 years. Before that, growing up in my own land. Did you go to some kind of hunting college? <laughs> you might call us that, yeah. In Silesia, my family were Jägermeisters, hunting guides, for ten generations. Why did you leave? The war? Nine. Although that was bad enough. A hunter can survive any war. It was after the war. When the terror came, the Russians, the brown men from the east, they thought we were Heron, Junkers, gentlemen, those shackles tore apart anything they did not understand. All over, my father. My mother, my sisters, I sent to camp. Only I survived. Young man, you should thank whatever gods there is. You've never seen what wolves men can become. Those of us who lived became willing to do the most terrible things. Just to survive one more day. And we're killed for a scrap of bread. And the corpses, the corpses themselves were not safe. So were those who would creep out of the barracks at night, under the moon. And then, then they would. <laughs> Forgive me, young man. This is not proper talk. This is in the table. Too much cognac. Please be kind and blame it on the cognac. <laughs> oh. No, it's all right. Clean up and go to bed. Yes, sir. 
everything gorgeous, Margaret? Huh? Just as advertised. Possibly even better, Dad. <laughs> for a hand, but it looks like you just lost it. <laughs> Dad, Ned said there was never anybody up here but the mad German. He was Daniel Boone in training. <laughs> Until yesterday, I was a dedicated city boy. What city? No place in particular. I've been traveling for a while. No offense, but uh, you don't exactly look like a country girl yourself. <laughs> you got that right. No, I, uh, I came up here to patch things back together with my dad. Well, it seemed like the two of you got along just fine. Well, that's just recently. Well, ever since I was 14, we've been like cats and dogs. Sometimes my fault, sometimes his. Anyway, after Mom died, I thought we were just behaving like damn fools. Besides, the way work's been going lately, I could use two weeks of absolute boredom. Although I don't know how boring it's really going to be. There aren't any wolves around to enjoy it. You're wrong. I see the tracks almost daily. But the woodsman sees more than city dollars. In fact, uh, Eric heard the howl of one just last night. In my country, that would have brought out all the Jaegers. Over here, wolves are a protected species. Who protects their prey? You mean people? Hell, Hugo, wolves live on mice, the last I heard. Right. Nobody ever proved a wolf attack on a man in this country. Perhaps. Perhaps not. In my homeland, I have ancestors who would argue the point. From their graves. Speaking of that, I think I'm ready for mine. Well, night all. The young guy is correct. <laughs> Best we be to sleep. <laughs> Dad, I don't like that man. You put up with a lot from a man that can get you a trophy buck year in and year out. Good night. Good night. Good night. Well, I'm not very tired. I think I'm going to have a last pipe down by the dock. Good night, Mike.
God, he was torn apart. <laughs> what happened to you? I heard Margaret scream, and I fell running right from the lodge. I warned the polizai about the wolves before. They laughed at me. <laughs> no. Poor Herr Kelly. See, the wolves not only killed him, but devoured parts of his body. Now perhaps they will believe me. When do you think the police will show up, Ed? I don't know. Tonight, maybe. We're pretty far in the sticks here. It'll take Hugo at least two hours to drive down the mountain, another hour for the police report, and then the drive back. And when they get here, what happens then? I guess they'll contact the state game people, get a hunting dispensation for a rabid wolf, and then they'll sweep the hills till they find him. And will they find him? Will they find the animal that killed my father? There he is. I wish I had that son of a buck in my sights right now. I'm not going to give that thing a chance to get away. I'm sorry, I can't. Look, I don't know anything about honey. I just got here the other day. Now you're leaving. Yeah. But don't do anything crazy. Just wait for Hugo. Aren't you gonna wait for Hugo? He's been gone over three hours. He should be back soon. Tell Hugo I had to leave. I'm sorry, but I couldn't wait for him. What is it you're running from? Hugo? 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 Gone when you had the chance. 
I might even have let you go. Very well. You ought to have been the first. Instead, you shall be the last. shall position yourselves here. <laughs> this shall be the killing ground. Where will you be? I will be at the edge of the wood. I shall drive the wolf towards you. So have a care when you fire. the police. I don't know what you did or what law you broke, but I'll take my time. Maybe you don't want to be here when they show up. I hope, whatever you did, I, I hope you managed to kill whatever wolf is after you.
There's a blanket in the van, unless you prefer running around the woods that way. I'm really not a thief. I just... Look, I'll be on my way. Well, you're not going to get very far dressed like that. My brother left some clothes with me when he went off to the army. I think they would fit you. And besides, that's my best blanket and I'd like it back. Oh, my goodness. What did you run into, a wildcat? Um, thorns. I fell in a thicket of thorns and I tore my clothes all to ribbons. And it was, I just... Look, I, got, I wandered away from my camp and got lost. And like a dummy, I wasn't carrying a compass, matches, nothing. That was three days ago. Three days? Must be starving. We better get you something to eat. Now, if she just starts and runs long enough to get us home... I'm Deidre. I'm Eric. <laughs> you look like an Eric. You know, I never thought I looked a thing like a Deidre, do you? What's in the basket? Oh, that's just herbs and roots and stuff from the woods. You can just dump it in the back if you want. You're into herbal medicine? Oh, well, sort of. Actually, I'm a witch. You don't believe me. Well, no, why wouldn't I believe you? Didn't I tell you to keep that gun of yours zipped up? Yeah, didn't I tell you when this grizzly got the Cooperman's dog, he'd come after us next? I'm not going to be on the menu. You don't tell me, Jake. I tell you. What are you doing? You got your son out here with a gun like this, too. If I let everybody run around with a gun like this, they'd be shooting each other before you even know what happened. That's my gun. I own it. I can do with what I want. You haven't got a license to hunt no grizzlies, Jake, or anything else in these woods. Now, since my office supplies those licenses, it seem I'd know who is and who isn't going to get one. I'll take it home. All of you! Seems to me you could spend some time hassling the people that caused the trouble around here, Sheriff. Hey, she's yeah. Get out of here! Hey, 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 hey. Deidre. Morning, Mr. Brandt. Honey, I'm spreading the word stay out of the woods until further notice. Just isn't safe. Well, there's nothing in these woods that would hurt me, Mr. Brandt. There is now a rogue grizzly. Killed a young couple up in McCabe's Lake last night. A bear in this part of the woods? Gotta be. I can't think of anything else that isn't extinct that could have torn him apart that bad. Oh, this is Eric. He uh, lost his clothes in a thorn bush. I was lost. For three days. Where'd you start out from? Way back up in the mountain someplace. Well, you're lucky all you ran into is some thorn bushes. I'll let the office know in case your uh, friends call up. Thanks. Just stay out of the woods now, both of you, okay? It isn't just that bear. There's a bunch of trigger-happy yahoos out hunting them. We'll shoot anything that moves. You take care. It's funny, I didn't pick up on a bear in these woods or any dangerous animal. A hot meal and a hot bath and you'll be good as new. Good witch of the north? It does attract tourists. Everybody's got to eat. Even a witch. People think all witches are either kooks or phonies or evil people that do the devil's work. And there are some like that. Only I'm not one of them. I'm a white witch. I, I only do good things for and I always thought a witch was an ugly old woman with a pointy hat and a wart at the end of her nose. Well, you're just like everybody else, Eric. 
If you see something you don't understand, you run from it or make jokes about it. What happened to those scratches on your face? They're gone. Uh, it was mostly dirt and washed right off. Some of those cuts looked awfully deep to me. I'm a fast healer. I'm real lucky that way. This is wonderful tea. May I have some more? I'll get the dishes. Do you have it ready, Miss Deidre? Tracy, I really don't think you need this. Oh, but I do. I've tried everything else you told me. Nothing worked. Please, Miss Deidre, you've got to help me. With the moon in its fourth phase and Leo rising, this should be the ideal time. Now, is there any place special, like where we should be when I give it to him? Well, since you're asking for Pan's help, I think a woodland setting would be best. I know the perfect place where you always go. Tracy, I must warn you. The potion doesn't always work, even if you use it exactly as I've told you. It'll work. I mean, it's got to. We'll try. Good luck, Tracy. I hope it works. Thank you, Miss Deidre. Thank you. She's in love. Or she thinks she is. But the boy doesn't reciprocate. So what did you sell her? A new deodorant? No, Eric. I love potion. It's not an aphrodisiac, if that's what you're thinking. Or a drug. I wouldn't sell that kind of thing to anyone. Certainly not a child. It's a totally harmless potion. If the boy isn't worthy, it won't do anything. But if he is... Then we'll get married and live happily ever after. I'm sorry. I didn't mean... I know you believe in all this, Deidre. I mean, if that's what helps you make it... Eric, it can help you make it, too. Maybe someday I'll give it a shot, Deidre. Right now, I gotta be on my way. Thanks for the meal, the clothes, everything. Wear it for for remembrance. I'll never forget you, Dieter. You didn't kill those people at McCabe's Lake. Something the first time I saw you asleep in the forest. And you saw me asleep naked in the forest? <sighs> it was a feeling of menace. A feeling of violence. Of evil. Say it. Evil. This thing inside me had come straight out of hell. There was nothing evil in this forest when I found you. There's nothing evil in this forest now. Even when the beast takes over your body, it can't make you kill. Not yet. Maybe. But it gets tougher every time. And soon I'll be liking it. No. We're gonna destroy it. Forever. You happen to have a silver bullet handy? Something much better. Faith. That good is stronger than evil. And that good will always prevail over evil.
so sweet, so pure, so beautifully innocent. Which is why I've got to get the hell out of here before I hurt you. Eric, I can rid you of this curse. I can. I can call up the forces of good on your behalf. Deidre, I know you believe, but I don't. If you are who you say you are, how can you not believe? Leon, he's taking some kind of drug. What is it? Potion. You said it was safe. You told me that. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. hours, maybe. Look, I gotta get away. Eric, you promised you'd let me try. As soon as you get the autopsy report, get a copy in my office, will you, Doc? The boy? He died. Medical examiner thinks he uh, had a cerebral hemorrhage induced by PCP. Angel dust. These were on him. And they're laced. There'll be an autopsy to make it official. But the doc thinks so, and so do I. Then we're free to go? I have nothing left to hold you for. Where's she at? Get that damn witch at! Back off, Jake. She didn't do it. I'm gonna send you back to hell, witch! You, you rotten piece of gold. You killed my kid! Come on! Oh. Get him looked at. If he's okay, see he gets home. If you have any friends or family, Deidre, now would be a real good time to visit. I'm not going to run away, Sheriff. For a week or two. Look, Jake believes the devil sent you here. And he's not alone. He's got friends. And I've got half my men out hunting some damn grizzly. So be a good girl, will you, Deidre? It's for your own safety. I think the sheriff has a point, Deidre. stay any longer, Deidre. I've got to get away from here, and so do you. No matter what happens, Eric, no matter what you see or what you hear, you must stay inside the pentagram. Him until he comes. I don't have a phone here. Hey, I see you. What do you look like? Come on. Hold it, all right? Just hold it. Let's be sensible, you guys, all right? She hasn't hurt anybody. She killed my boy. The guy who sold him that angel dust is the one who killed him. She never hurt anybody. The sheriff's on his way. We called him. 
here. Oh, who's phone? The young fellow that was with her, where are they? Devil, devil, come and got him. Damn it, Jake, if you set this fire, if you hurt them. It's the devil. I saw him. Hair and teeth and claws. Damn near kill me. Sheriff, I've got a call just now. They spotted the grizzly by Mill Creek heading south. Devil, the damn bear's what you saw. You could wish it was a devil. And that he took you before I'm finished with you. about now, damn wolf. Remember, always.
You've spoiled me. Oh, Teresa, I doubt it. A week from now, and you won't even remember my name. Ah, uh, that I doubt. Hey, Hank. How's the hand, Hank? Good, good. Well, it, it hurts some. They, they say I should rest it for a week or so. Well, you do that. You know, I've been thinking it'd be a big help if you'd stay a few more days. Oh, Hank, I wish I could, but I should have left yesterday. What's more, it's not too practical. Oh, let us worry about that. And besides, didn't you say that your brother's ship wasn't docking till Friday? Well, Friday, yeah. But San Francisco is a long way away. Okay. Do what you like, but it's on your head if I wind up a cripple. All right. All right, I'll stay. I'll stay. But only for a couple days. Oh, good. I'm glad, Eric. Delighted to have somebody here who isn't as scared of a little hard work. A little hard work. Hi. How you doing? Hi. Can I get you something? Air conditioning. But I'll take a soda instead. You got it. Where you headed? L.A. I'm moving there, I guess. You ever been there? Yeah. It's a great place if you have a reason to be there. Why? What do you plan on doing there? I don't know. Why does anybody do anything? Are you here because you want to be here? Because you have to be. Oh, no. Eric, <laughs> why don't you give Teresa a hand? I'll help this pretty young lady. Sorry. Thanks. All right. Can I get you something? Yes. You know, Hank and I never really wanted children, but when you get to be our age, you kind of think that maybe you missed the boat. Not that you expect them to stay forever, but... That's a tuna milk. Oh, I actually make that a tuna with mayo and whole wheat. Tuna, mayo, whole wheat. Anything else? That's it. Do you want me to help you write that? No. No. That's okay. It's okay. Do something for you? Kinda hoping so. I'm looking for someone. This one. Name of Eric Cord. You seen him? What are you looking for him for? He jumped bail. Run this place all by yourself? Sorta. Just me and my wife. What makes you think this fellow's in the area anyway? He was over in Hatchford about a week ago. How's the wing? It's okay. I just got the cast off this afternoon. Why? I heard you were looking for some temporary help. Thought you might have seen him. Nope. Can't afford the luxury. Hey, you mind if I uh, take a little look around? Yes, I do. Is there a problem here, mister? Sorry. Unless you're with the health department, you're not going in my kitchen. Now, we haven't seen this fella. Well... Why didn't you just say so? Ma'am, you ever see this fellow come around the restaurant? No. No, I haven't seen him either. But if we do, is there a number where we can reach you? He's gone. Thanks, both of you. I appreciate it. Appreciate it? What's this all about? Hank, I wish I could tell you. Well, you better tell me something instead of the pack of lies you've been feeding us. I can't. Believe me, I want to. Look, I'm sorry, but I can't stay. Don't you trust us enough to tell us what happened? It's not that I don't trust you. It's that it's just impossible to understand. But Eric, if you haven't done anything wrong, maybe we can help you. That's just it. No one can. Why? You go out that door and I'll call the police myself. What are you wanted for anyway? Murder. Murder? What do you say? Eric, just can't believe that. There must be an explanation. Not that anyone in their right mind would listen to. Mom. Mom, I'm fine, really. 
I just don't have any air conditioning. I'm up. Yo, Willie, really, ain't that the chick didn't want to Actually, bother me? Actually, I was just calling station? to see how you and Dad were. I think it is. <laughs> good, good. Yeah, I'm fine. I will. I'll call as soon as I get there. Okay. Bye. Where you headed, sweet cheeks? Los Angeles. I bet a pretty thing like you's headed right here to Hollywood. None of your business. It's going all that way to get your heart broke. Probably breaking someone's to get there, too. <laughs> Seems like a shame, don't it, Will? Hey, Meg, I'm very hungry. Look, whatever it was I did, I'm sorry about, okay? Well, you just turned us on, honey. There's nothing to be sorry about. I got some friends on the way over here. We're gonna have us a little party. Why don't you come along? No. Thank you. <laughs> She's polite, too. Stop it! No! Don't! You two bums, let her go and get the heck out of here! Hey, well, uh, out of here. Stop it! You're hurting me! You heard him. Move it along. Well, if it isn't Goody Two Shoes. What are you, the bouncer for Pops here? Nobody wants any trouble here, so why don't you guys just pack it up and take it someplace else? You want me to leave? Fine, I'll leave. No problem. No! Stop it! All you gotta do is kick my butt. No. Come on. <laughs> What's the problem? Problem? <laughs> I ain't got no problem. Oh. Let's not do this, okay? You're a dead pretty boy. <laughs> you better be good with that thing, old man. I'm good enough. Move it. Move it! All right, now look, I'm gonna put this knife away. Why don't you just put that gun down? Come on now, old man. You're gonna give yourself a heart attack. Come on now, give me that gun or I'm gonna have to take it from you. Oh, don't you move another step. Go on. Let her be! Go on. Go on. Get out of here. We'll take you. Hold it! Let her be! What are you gonna do, old man? Shoot us? Don't make me laugh. You got more here than you can handle. I'm gonna call the police. Hank, I think we just better forget this and let these guys go. Let us go? I think it's too late for that. gonna do now old man they're your friends you better tell them to stop i don't want to use this but i will if i have to hey <laughs> come on in boys it's party time <laughs> think you're all right Tough luck, sweetheart.
I got a bone. I ain't done picking with you yet, boy. Stop it! Don't! <laughs> Hello? 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 What are you doing, Granny? Come on. You're gonna miss all the action. Come on. <laughs> Don't you ever raise your hands to me again. You got that. Hello, operator. Hello, operator. Hey! Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Incoming. Oh. I see you all are starting without me here. <laughs> well, let that be a lesson to all of you. I mean, I don't ask much. Never. A little cooperation. Just a little bit. A little friendliness. Just an itsy bitsy. <laughs> I mean, how are we going to have a party? We don't all get to know each other. Billy boy. Play us some music. <laughs> you got it, man. <laughs> Rock and roll. <laughs> what are you planning on doing when the police hear about this? Hear about it? What? Well, you folks don't think I'm going to let you leave here unhappy, do you? The heck no. <laughs> I mean, that just ain't my way. People don't leave mixed parties on that. Cause folks don't leave mixed parties <laughs> at all. <laughs> Don't you make a little uh, romantic move for the lady you know? Huh? Right on. Come here. No, no, yeah! Hey, Billy Boy, bring that scotch over here, would you? Hold on, let's see. Hold on, let's see. No! Open up, no! No, you're nothing but scum! Why don't you mind your business, Bob? Don't you mind me if I had a kid like you, I'd drown it. So would I. That's right, hurt the words, Mom. Is that what you and the old man did? Drown your kids? What, you never had none? <laughs> oh, what's the matter, Pop? Couldn't deliver? <laughs> well, she's a good-looking old bird. <laughs> or was it you? Well, which you was it? <laughs> it don't make no difference. Important thing is that I come along. Now, ain't that right? <laughs> you see, you could have had a kid just like me. So all your regrets are over. I'm home, Ma! <laughs> hey! What's wrong with you, man? I'm gonna bend your antenna. All right, let's call this thing off. One more step when he cooks. Tell him the party's over, Mick. You ain't got the guts! Take him! You like this, huh? Well, let's see how long it takes to make a patty melt. <laughs> Would you look at this? Boy's got a tattoo. <laughs> it's good work. Where'd you get that? Well, I'd like to have me one like that. What are you, the member of some kind of weird satanic cult group or something? The goody Two Shoes Hells Angels? <laughs> All right. I'm telling you, if you don't let these people go, man, no one's getting out of here alive. <laughs> hey, man, lighten up. This is a party. You just can't seem to get that through, can you? I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to make you a Sunday. <laughs> It is not Wait, when I finished it. No. There, now you're a Sunday. Hey, 
bud. Get away from her. After me, you understand? She likes me, Mick. Get your hands off me. Everybody freeze! <laughs> This little get-together's gotten out of hand. It really has. Get him up. Now, for being so much trouble, I'm gonna do something real special for you. Bud, take him in the back. Lock him up! I'm really disappointed. I really am. But since everybody's so impatient, I guess we might as well get down to business. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I ain't nothing if I ain't a crowd pleaser. <laughs> There's nothing to be afraid of, sweetheart. Me and my friends just gonna love you to death. <laughs> Party time, sweetheart. <laughs> Come on now, honey, don't be that way. You just make the whole thing a lot worse. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I'm just getting everybody all hot and bothered about this thing. Yes, she is. <laughs> Stop it! Kill me, but leave her alone! Oh. That's okay with me, old man. You, you stop! You leave him alone! Right here, Mick. We kill them both with one shot. <laughs> I think he means it. Excuse me, Pop, I got a little business over here I got to attend to. <laughs> <laughs> sure use a haircut. <laughs> what the hell was that? Go over and tell the police that we're heading to the hospital, and then we'll see how Hank's doing. Okay? You know, the paramedics said that it was just a flesh wound. He'd be all right. I'm sure. I bet he's running the nurses ragged. By the time we get there, he'll have checked himself out. According to those police officers, your husband was roughed up by his, uh, used to be some pretty nasty biker fellas. Her husband's in the hospital, and we need to get there. I suppose you were out back, too, huh? Didn't happen to see anything, either? Excuse us. Well, maybe I'll just drop over to the hospital and see how your husband's doing. Maybe we can have a little chat. You going to be there, too, miss? For a while. Then I'm heading home.
hands up, must too, and he says, relax. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my old lady complains less than you too. Yeah. yeah. Boy, this damn storm kicks out. Uh, don't let that boogeyman get you. Hey, let me find you here. Here's one good. You hear something like a growl or something? No. Huh? I don't hear nothing, man. Come on, man. There's something down in woods. Pull up seat, son. Next game won't start for another week or two the way this is going. Forget it, Russell. You can't stampede me into any mistakes. Mess up at your own speed, Gus. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. I'm really not looking for a game. I'm uh, looking for a grizzly. Well, you came a long way for nothing, son. Wasn't no bear killed those fellas. It wasn't? Now, like sign says, this is Bigfoot country. Tell me. What would a young fellow like you do if he found himself a grizzly? <laughs> Take his picture. I'm a wildlife photographer. What's that a fact? Any money in that? Well, if it's really Bigfoot, there will be. Look, I'd really like to see where those men were attacked if possible. Well, I'll drive you up there myself, son. <laughs> be an hour before my next move, anyway. Go between the two barns and follow that trail straight up the ridge for a couple of miles. You practically trip over the campsite. <laughs> Appreciate the lift. Yeah, I sure as hell look over my shoulder if I was you. You know, with all these killings, this woods are just chuck full of trigger happy idiots, and they all want to bag Bigfoot. I'll be careful. Thanks again, Eric. There was three of those hunters. I only count one of you. Keep in mind, huh? I will. Thanks.
should have been here for the kill that night, boy. There was plenty to go around. We could have enjoyed it together. Scorsini. <laughs> yeah, I found them right over there, you know. Just the three of them sitting around a nice, warm fire. They finished their dinner while I waited. <laughs> See, I figured, why let a good meal go to waste? Stay away. <laughs> me worried for a moment. <laughs> Where do you think you're going in that condition? Please. Where am I? In my home, on my farm. My name is Mary Peterson. And yours? Eric. Eric Cord. Nice to meet you, Eric. How did I get here? Oh, I found you outside earlier. You had quite an accident. What happened? I don't know. <laughs> but luckily for you, I am an excellent nursemaid. I really have to go. No, oh, all in good time. Now, please, you must get some rest. You saved my life. I should be thanking you instead of giving you a hard time. Well, let's just be a good patient and take our liquid, shall we? There. You haven't seen... Somebody else around here, have you? A tall, rough-looking man? Not a soul. Are you in some sort of trouble? No. No, nothing like that. Just must have been a bad dream. This man was chasing me through the forest, out in the storm. You know how real something like that can seem. I understand. This is a terribly difficult situation for you. It is for both of us. I, I can't even recall the last time I entertained a house guest. You live here alone? Ever since my father died back in the Great Depression. There aren't a lot of people who would have taken in a total stranger. Maybe they would be right. 
My father once made a mistake in trusting a stranger. Tragically, it cost him his life. What happened? He befriended someone, a drifter, who came to the house to seek help. In return for his kindness, my father was murdered. God, I'm sorry. It was a long time ago. I was young, so very innocent. I pray I haven't made a mistake as well, Aaron. I pray to God you haven't either. You can't get far, boy. You know that in your heart. You can run, but you can't hide. No! The first time I saw him was a hot day in July. I remember the air was so thick you could scarcely breathe. Then he knocked at our door asking for a night's lodging. Father accompanied him to the barn. But it wasn't Father who returned. Father had been destroyed. And now I was destined to belong to Janos forever. It would be seven years before I would see him again. And then every seven after that. Janos. I think I should be having any more tea. Do an old woman a favor, won't you? Just a little more.
What do you think, Gus? How is he? He's a healthy young colt, Russell. I believe you'll be up and running in no time. That is a young boy, you old quack. That is not somebody's livestock. Force a habit. Sorry. You'll have a world-class headache. As far as I can see, that's about it. Welcome back among the living, son. How'd I get here? In my truck. Don't you remember running into me last night? <laughs> Took a pretty good whack, it's all. Man, will quit playing before long. You know, I got to worrying when you didn't come back. Looks to me like it's a good thing I did worry. What'd you do, run on the Bigfoot's nest out there? I wish. Eric, there was a man here looking for you from L.A. Some kind of bounty hunter. Rogan. Didn't have many nice things to say about you. Well, that's a long story, Mr. Russell. Where is he now? Well, he's up at the sheriff's office. He went to the campsite, but he came up dry. Guess he thinks he needs some reinforcements. Are you guys keeping me here for him? What in the hell makes you think we'd do that? You don't look like a murderer to me, son. That's beside the point. I can take just so much. And he was so damn rude when he came here. I just hate rude worse than I hate anything. Nobody breaks up one of our checker games. Harry, what happened out there last night that had you running like a scared rabbit? I was in this old farmhouse. Peterson house. That Elmo fellow said he searched it. Searched it? When I was there. What about the woman, Mary Peterson? You know her? Mary's dead, son. She and her dad were killed back when we were just kids. They were murdered by a drifter.